Believe it or not, this is the beginning of what they call a modern quilt. Good morning everybody, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is my weekly vlog on Monday, November the 12th, 2018, vlog number 93. We're heading towards 100, possibly by the time of Christmas, who knows. Anyways, what's been happening this week? Well, you saw in the little teaser at the beginning uh, some of my uh, blocks for the quilt that I'm making. Now this quilt is called a modern quilt. And uh, Modern Quilt was explained to me in the class the other day. We just started the class for the first time last week. And uh, I really can't tell you what a Modern Quilt is. Um, I guess it's a quilt that doesn't usually use the traditional colors and possibly the traditional um, blocks of a traditional quilt. Whatever. Well, I decided to use some really wild colors. Um, these are ones that come from a designer called Kay Facet. Um, he's actually known for his knitting materials. That's how he got really started in the biz business, or at least that's how he became famous. But he makes some really wonderful, but bright, bold, and uh, somewhat wild fabrics. So this called for a jelly roll of strips that you have to subcut. And if you don't know what a jelly roll is, it's just a big ball or roll, basically a roll, of two and a half inch strips of fabric. And they all coordinate with each other. Um, I needed 35 strips. I bought one jelly roll that had 40 strips in it, but I decided I wanted a little bit more variety, so I bought a second jelly roll. That's by K Facet as well, but a little different color uh, way. So here's what I've been making so far. Now these have not been squared up or anything. It's a very simple block, but the idea is the outside pieces go together and then you sort of shock it, or at least that's what I'm going to call it, shock it with sort of a contrasting piece in the center. Now I am finding that doing this with this type of fabric is not as easy as it might be if you had limited yourself to only a few colors, but if anything, it's going to stand out for sure when I get it done. Now there's another block that goes into this as well and then it all gets stitched together but that's as far as I've got so far. I think I've got about 12 of these blocks done. I need 35 of them. This is going to be a throw size uh, quilt and I need another 35 of the second block and then it all starts to be put together. Um, I did discover something very interesting and any of you out there that are quilters you may have known this already but I did not. Not all jelly rolls are the same. Um, I told you that a jelly roll are, is made up of two and a half inch strips that are the width of fabric, meaning you know they're about 42 to 44 inches long. Okay, problem I had with, since I used two jelly rolls, is that one jelly roll was exactly that, two and a half inches wide. The other jelly roll I discovered as I was putting the blocks together is not. It is actually two and three eighth inches wide. Now, it's supposed to be two and a half inches wide, um, but it wasn't. And you would say, well, eighth of an inch doesn't make a big difference. Yeah, it does. It actually does, believe it or not. So that's why some of my blocks are not the same size. They're off slightly. Now, not a huge problem, just more of an annoyance, but that means I will have to, when I get them all done, sort through them and figure out exactly what I need to square the block up to um, so that they're all the same. Um, kind of an extra step in all of this, although not necessarily, oftentimes I have found at least when I make quilts that I do have to square up blocks as I go along. So I'll wait till I get all of these done and then I'll figure out what the measurement should be and square it up from that. But buyer beware, I guess. I did not know that not all jelly rolls are necessarily cut equal. So anyways, live and learn, right? 
And uh, what else have I been working on? I started uh, my second em machine embroidery class. This is not done that I'm going to show you, but we made these pocketed pot holders. And here it is. Now there has to be a binding put on this, but I'm debating here. I am thinking that I'm going to make another one of these because I had a couple little goofball mistakes here. You see this white on this side? That's the batting underneath. And I think I cut it too close because you see this side, the material actually, it's stitched down on that side, but the material, the fabric comes over right over to this edge. And I think I should have done that with this one, but I didn't realize it at the time. Um, it's a very confusing pattern. Um, but I see how it works down. There is a pocket and the whole bit. The other thing I did was some of the batting was popping up over the top of this. Um, so I trimmed it close and I trimmed it a little too close. So my satin stitching here got all frayed. And I don't like that. So what I'm thinking of doing is uh, I may finish this one up. I might try to do a satin stitch across here, except the only problem is it's going to show up on the back, but it would be okay on a table for, you know, just to sit something on at Christmas. And I may just surge all the way around the edges with this, as opposed to putting on a, an actual fabric binding. And I'll start a new one. And I don't have more of this particular fabric left, but I've got other Christmas fabrics that'll work just as well. And, you know, live and learn. So I look at this one as the prototype, the next one will be better. But it's kind of fun to do these uh, once you learn how. And uh, I did order uh, from the Ultimate Sewing Store the CD that has a whole variety of these. I'm not sure how many different designs of pot holders. And if I get time, I'm thinking of making some more of these and throwing them in that gift bag I'm giving to my sister for Christmas. We'll see. So that's what I've been up to this week. And what's next? Okay, let's talk about the YouTube channel of the week. Um, I may have mentioned these guys before. I can't remember. Um, I, I was following them uh, to a great extent at one point, and then I sort of lost interest. I lost interest because of what they were trying to do. They're called the Piano Guys. Now, this is not an, a craft video or a quilting video. This is a, a series of music videos, but these guys come from Utah. Um, they're very talented and they principally use a piano and a uh, cello. And uh, they take modern music, mesh it up with more traditional music, and they make really nice videos. And as you'll hear in the uh, review, I have been to one of their concerts. Um, the reason I stopped following them is because they stopped posting stuff on YouTube. They went to sort of a Patreon system where they wanted people to basically pay to see their videos and things. And I don't think that's working out for them too well because they're back on YouTube. And basically what they have on YouTube right now is you, you don't see hear all of their music, but you see some of it and hear some of it. And it's to get you to buy their next album. And I think they have a new album out. Now, they are well worth watching they're well worth listening to and I have bought some of their uh, music as well I've even been to one of their concerts because um, their music's good I just kind of felt that they'd gone a little bit too commercial and I get it you know they they have to make a living um, but yeah it rubbed me kind of the wrong way so I stopped following them and the other day I got a notice from them that said they had a new album out, so I checked them back out on YouTube. So here's my review. This week's YouTube channel is actually one that involves music. It's by The Piano Guys. Now you may have heard of these four gentlemen who produce music out of their uh, home area of Utah. They're Mormon by background, but they do a lot of really cool modern mixes of music, of popular music, uh, that primarily they perform with a cello and piano. Um, their videos are very sophisticated uh, when you watch them. Now I have seen these gentlemen in concert here in Canada and it was a very interesting type of concert because, well to be honest, I found the concert kind of boring. Their music isn't boring, but visually watching them live perform, I found that kind of boring. But they did supplement their stage show 
with some of the videos that you can see on this YouTube channel. So if you're interested in music and if you like music videos, uh, then I suggest you try out The Piano Guys for something a little different but very entertaining. Okay, so if you have uh, a YouTube channel or even a website that you'd like me to take a look at and review on here, let me know. Uh, send me a message either via email or in the comments below. Um, give me the uh, URL for either the website or the YouTube channel and I'll take a look at it and I'll put it up because quite frankly I'm starting to run out of YouTube channels to review at least for my list of ones that I subscribe to. Um, so that would be of great help and I think of a lot of interest to other people because after all I'm pretty much just showing you what I'm interested in. That's just about me. You know, let's hear about you. Okay, so video resources are below. Stephen and Walter are uh, listing is below as well and yes you may have wondered some of you may have wondered why we, we did not come on on Sunday um, I kind of gave everybody a warning about that uh, or a reminder a warning not really a warning a reminder uh, on last week's vlog because of the nature of the weekend I'm going to talk a little bit more about that uh, later on in the broadcast but we had to do it on Saturday night and I was actually surprised at the number of people, the regulars that were able to follow us on Saturday night as well. But we'll, we will be back to a regular time and regular day uh, this coming week. So it'll be on Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're not switching it over to Saturday night um, because usually we're doing something on Saturday night. Or we're hoping we're doing something on Saturday night. I don't know. So moving on, uh, the Piano Guys uh, YouTube channel is listed below as well. And the book of the week is there too. So what's pissing me off this week? I'm going to save this because I want to talk about something a little bit more serious to me anyways uh, near the end of today's vlog. So I'm going to just save that. And it doesn't have some, it has as much to do with being pissed off at something as... Uh, my feelings about something that's been going on okay so I'll come to that near the end of the vlog all right product review well the only thing I have to show you and I'm sorry but this is more towards the sewers the quilters out there but it's this little gizmo that at first glance looks like a paper cutter it's not it's a fabric cutter it's made by Fiskars of course you know Fiskars makes all kinds of paper cutters and scissors and cutting products and they're usually of very good quality um, well, they have make these rotary cutters. This is a rotary cutter right in here on a track and this is meant for cutting fabric. Now when you're doing quilting you use rulers and rotary cutters for, to cut everything up and getting things accurate you have to be, you know, it takes practice. This is a godsend. This will cut through several layers of fabric at the same time. It's easy to hold down. The markings on it are clear. So it's basically a combination of a ruler and a cutter. I bought one a couple of weeks ago that's longer and thinner, a six and a half inch or six inch by 12 inch or 24 inch, sorry. And I've been using that and I loved it. I love it so much that when I saw they had this 12 by 12 one, which is better for smaller pieces, I immediately ordered it. These are not cheap tools. These cost over $70 Canadian. Um, I ordered them on Prime though because I have a Prime membership so I didn't have to pay shipping. But then I did have to pay tax on them on top of that. So a pricey little gadget. But yeah, I, I feel it's well worth the money because I love it. And you can replace the blades just like you can in any rotary cutter. Um, in here they just take standard rotary cutter blades. So that's great. I believe they're 45 millimeter. Or is that a 60? That's probably a 60. So, great. So if you're into quilting, if you've been looking at these or whatnot, I highly recommend them. And I'm going to do a little bit more detailed review of these rulers, plus a couple of other things that I've got that relate to quilting in an episode that maybe I'll get up uh, later today or sometime this week uh, on the Idiot Quilter. Okay, so that was what's new. And that jumps us right into the book review. Now... This was actually a book that was written for teachers, for educators, and they call it Foldables. Um, Diane Zeke's Reading and Study Skills Foldables. 
um, 3D interactive graphic organizers, hands-on manipulatives, reading and study skill strategies, review and assessment, make social studies accessible to all students. Well, I got my hands on this. I don't know where I got it. Um, I don't know if I ordered it online or I was at a conference or something and picked it up. But it shows you how to make some really neat things, you know, that are folded. It has very clear instructions, has great pictures, and I have made quite a few of these. And I've used them in school, but they're also usable for, you know, album making, card making, things like that. Um, this is an envelope fold one, and I forget how this all folds up, but it does. Um, there's a pop-up book. Oops, I think I got something stuck on it, or that was just there to, as an example, but you see, shows you how to make pop-ups. Um, of course, you do these on fancier paper and things like that. Uh, this is a pyramid fold, they called it. Um, this one I used uh, with my grade nines for uh, sentence structure exercises. We decorated them, we put in the different types of sentences and things like that and fold it up in their notebook and we get it out. Um, three tab book, a pocket book. I used them a lot in class when I was teaching and the kids loved them, especially, well any grade level really loved them. But they were great little organizers. We used them for study notes, for you know review purposes. We used them for um, you know uh, novel studies, things like that. Grammar, spelling, uh, sentence construction, um, projects, all kinds of things. And the kids really got into it. It was just a different way of keeping notes. That was kind of fun for them. And you know, if you, if you make something fun and creative, um, the content is better remembered, I found, with the kids. So, you don't have to be a teacher, though, to enjoy this book. Um, as I said, it you can use it in your card making, you can use it in your scrapbooking, you can use it in mixed media, projects, album making, everything. So again, it's called Foldables, and uh, it is, now I looked it up on Amazon, and I have no idea what I paid for it originally, but on Amazon.ca right now, it's they're listing it for $18.32. There may be some used ones, but you might have to hunt a little bit. It wasn't quite as clear on Amazon whether or not there were used ones at a cheaper price. Um, it's not a new book. I've had it for quite a few years, um, but it's still available. And, you know, if you are an educator, I highly recommend that you check it out. Um, great for elementary school teachers, but I was a high school teacher and I used it in high school too as well. Because after all, high school students are just elementary school students that got bigger. Um, so yeah, I think you'll find it well worth the, the, the money. And I've got a link below for it on Amazon. Okay, inspiration this week. Nothing, sorry. Couldn't think of anything. I wasn't that inspired. It was a busy, busy week, which we're going to come to and talk about in a few minutes. Um, so we'll hang on to that for now. But I did go through my drawers, and this week I did a segment on my pencils, pens, and markers. So what's in my drawers this week? Well, something that we all have, and probably a lot of, and that's markers and pens and pencils of all sorts. If you do mixed media, if you do scrapbooking, if you do card making, if you do any kind of paper craft, you can't get away without having this essential supply. And if you're like me, you probably have tried quite a few different ones in your time. So I looked in my drawers this week and came up with a few of the pen sets that I really like and some that I don't like so much. And I thought I'd just briefly talk about each one. So I'm just going to clear a path here. I'm going to start with pencil crayons. Pen pencil crayons are the most important tool if out of all the coloring agents because they're so versatile. But not all pencil crayons are the same as I have found out over the years. You get basically what you pay for. And the cheaper pencil crayons that you can buy at the dollar store aren't bad you can use them for certain things but I have found that they really aren't that pigmented um, they go on kind of sparsely 
you can't blend them. Um, they're just basically for kids to color in a coloring book, um, but not really for people who want to do something a little bit more serious. The ones that I like the best and are probably one of the most expensive are Prismacolor. Now I have these in a in several different sizes and this is just one of the small boxes that I have of 36 but I do have one that has I think close to 200 in it and as I said they're very expensive and I don't think there's a price tag on this one and there isn't but I'm pretty sure this box of 36 probably cost me about $60 at the time and you're going to say whoa $60 for pencil crayons that's what I said too but once you've tried them they are wonderful and you can see they come in this nice little can that's attractive all ready to go they do come pre-sharpened which is very nice and you can get a decent little uh, sharpener for these that are basically meant for Prisma uh, colored pencils um, the reason I recommend if you're going to invest in a set of these that you also invest in the sharpener which usually is under ten dollars is because why sharpen with a cheap dollar store sharpener? Um, they don't do the job as well as one that's really designed to work with these. So I'll just take one out and show you the kind of color you get. So immediately it, they go on very smooth. They're very pigmented. So you can see that um, they are a very nice marker and you can get a, and they usually come with a blender pencil um, I'm thinking this set maybe not maybe I'm lying to you I do have one somewhere it's probably in my bigger set um, but they will blend very very well so these ones as far as I'm concerned are the best um, as I said expensive but you get what you pay for. And I just think they're coming in, they come in these little tins and that, and that's really cool. Okay, moving on to another one that I really like is actually a marker. And these are the Jane Davenport um, Glitz Sparkle mar Markers. Uh, this particular set is called Glitz C. Um, these are a very nice marker. I do believe they are water soluble. And these particular ones have glitter in them. Now, I haven't used these in a while. So, although I haven't used them for a while, they are working fine. Um, oops. Just grab another color here. Now, I don't believe these are a permanent marker. They work very much like a paint pen. You see, I'm pushing it down just to get some of the color to mix through. This one I'm having a little trouble with. But as I said, I have not used these in quite a while, but they're just going pretty good. So you can see they're very pigmented. And of course, this particular type have glitter in them as well. So you get a little bit of a shine to them. So I do like these, although, again, I haven't used them that much. You might wonder why I haven't used these types of markers very much that I'm talking about. It's because I don't color that much, but I like them. Okay, now another set that were very, very pricey, uh, and they're very professional. So if you're into animation or that kind of thing, these are the markers for you. These are Koi. Koi make all kinds of different watercolor paints and markers and paint supplies. And this was a set of 12 and the price tag is still on it. $43.39. So very, very pricey. But they are watercolor brush. And just look at that. I mean, the color is very pigmented. They are blendable because they are water soluble, but I do believe that once they dry, they are permanent. And you can see they have a certain amount of translucence to them. You can see the other color underneath, so that makes them very blendable as well. 
Yes, very expensive. But once again, you get what you pay for. And these are very, very good. So they're an investment. They are very much an investment. Now, speaking of investments, Kaisercraft had 48 pens that have 12 pastel, 12 glitter, 12 metallic, and 12 neon. And they come in this little box, and I think these cost me about, look and see if there's price tag, there isn't. I think these cost me around $50 at the time when I bought these. In fact, I've forgotten I had these, and I'm not sure how to get into the case. So, this way. So, here you have them all laid out, which is kind of neat. Because if you were going to a, a crop or something like that, and you just wanted to take one set of pens, there you go. You've got everything. You have metallic, you have past pastels, you have neon. Let's try neon. How about a little hot pink? Let's just move this up here for a minute. So remember, these are pens. They're not markers. But you could color with them in fine areas because they have a fairly fine point and you can see they write fairly well um, again this is something I have not used in quite some time this is another a neon blue but they are still working very well and as I said this is sort of a variety pack because they do have glitter ones as well in here this is a, the glitter blue. Now, this one, and I'll bet you it's because it's got glitter in it, is giving me trouble. Now, I might, to fix that up, I would probably have to run it under a tap. Hot water tap would help. This one. Yeah, the glitter ones seem to clog up. Let's try... This is another glitter. Let's see. I'm not having any luck. Okay, this, nope. See, same problem. So, you spend a lot of money on these kind of things, and they can give you some problems, but I think I can fix that. Let's try one of the pastels. Hmm, I thought it might be just a glitter problem. Oh, here we go. Just because they've been sitting for a while. So, you might keep that in mind every now and then, bring them out and just do some scribbling with them to keep them flowing. But I think if I run these under a hot water tap, that will loosen them up. But they're a very nice set as well. Okay, now let's talk about one that I do not recommend anybody ever purchase because I've had a lot of trouble with these. I was into Project Life some time ago and I was buying everything Project Life and one of the things I bought was their set of 18 pens by Becky Higgins. This is my second set. I fought with the company for six months to have the first set that I bought replaced because the first set did not write. Only about two of the pens out of the 18 would actually write and that's how they came to me right out of the package. So I even sent them a video showing what the problem was. So here and I'm sorry if this is a little out of focus. I don't know what's going on. I don't think I have the automatic focus on. But let's just take one of these and see what we get today. I have not had these out of their box in quite some time. Yep, just what I figured. That one will not write. Try another one. These do not come in a whole lot of different colors, but they come in different sizes. Nope, will not write. Let's go to one that's got a fatter tip to it. Now that one's writing okay. Let's grab one of these. Nope. And I can tell you that if I went through this whole set and tried every one, which I won't do right now, that there's probably only two or three that are still working. These have not been used at all. And this is the way they are. And this is the second set. So these are by American Craft, and I can say only too little about the quality of these pens. These were expensive. These were over $50. 
Uh, and as I told you, I had to fight with American Crafts to send me a set that worked. This is the set they sent me. You can see how well they work, and they don't. And it's not just because they've been sitting on the shelf for a long time. It's That's the way they came to me. So if you're thinking of investing in markers or pens, stay away from the Project Life Becky Higgins ones because they are horrible, absolutely horrible. Now, maybe some of you have some of these and you've had better experiences. And I would put it down to maybe I got a bad batch the first time. But when the second batch is like this as well, and there were six months between them, then once burned, you know what they say, I will never be dealing with any of the American Craft pens of any sort, Project Life or any other ones they make, uh, because of that. So, overall, out of these ones, if you want something that's a water brush, watercolor brush marker set, I highly recommend the Koi. They give you absolutely no problems. They've been sitting on my shelf for two years. Um, and you can see they immediately worked no problem. Um, expensive, yes, but a good investment. The Jane Davenport markers, and she has several different uh, styles and colors, um, are also good and a little less expensive. I'm not sure what these run. I think they were $15 for a package of five. And I absolutely recommend, if you're going to invest in pencil crayons because you're a serious color, Prisma Color markers are the go-to for that. Again, expensive product. And these, well, these are more for fun. And as I said, you can see I had some problems with those. I'm hoping that if I run them under a hot water tap, um, that that will alleviate that problem. Not absolutely sure. Again, a big investment. So bottom line is, if you need something for coloring and you have a limited budget, then I would invest in quality as opposed to maybe quantity or the ones that you can get at the dollar store. It's all up to you as to what you're going to do with these. So that's what's in my drawers this week. So I'm sure if you're like me, you've been collecting markers for years and probably have all kinds of them. By the way, some markers last longer than others. You may have a whole bunch you've hardly ever used, but as you saw in my video, they may be dried up. So you might want to get them out every now and then and you know, scribble something on a piece of paper just to keep them active. Because especially if you're buying expensive ones, you know I'm drying up. Okay, so events in the past week. Well, uh, I've already mentioned sort of my uh, two, two classes I'm taking uh, now. Actually, starting this week, I'm taking a third class. Might be overdoing it. I have Modern Quilt on Thursday, but on Wednesday, I'm starting a new class, and we're making a satchel. They call it the Sydney bag. In fact, after I'm finished today's vlog, I've got to cut out my pieces from all the material, and there's a lot of pieces to cut in preparation for this class. I'm a little worried about this class. This is a fairly complicated bag. I took it on purpose for that because it's got about three or four zippers in it. It's got snap pieces. It's got flaps. It's got straps. Um, it may look really well it looks in the in in the patterning like a really nice bag and i've seen one uh at the store um already done and yeah but we'll see we'll see because this is moving out of my comfort zone a little bit i've made bags before as you know but those bags are tote bags they're kind of easy this is a little bit more involved so i'm hoping it turns out okay and if it does i'll, I'll make more um, of, the, of them as well because you know it's a little bit more sophisticated than just making a tote but we'll see um, and what else and of course the embroidery class so I think next week we're doing a, an embroidered uh, wine bottle carrier gift bag kind of a thing and um, yeah it's kind of fun that class is really really packed um, usually they have a small classroom they can usually only handle about eight people at a time with regular sewing machines. There are nine of us in this class and embroidery machines are bigger than an average sewing machine, especially the one I've got. And there's about two other people in the class that have that machine as well. So because of the way our 
support bars or embroidery bars work on those you have to like have strategic sitting seating it was a little unnerving on uh, Saturday when I got there um, about three quarters of the class were already there and I was there 35 minutes before the class started and I almost had a panic attack when I walked in and went like cripes where am I going to put my sh machine how am I going to set this up but you know good group of people and we all made it work um, without too much of a problem but it was squishy and when you're doing things that are a little bit more complicated with that many people and when you're literally sitting on each other's lap uh, mistakes can be made it is not the best learning environment um, what can I say uh, basically I guess the store owner the instructor did not want to turn anybody away but at the other hand, well, really, I, I'll, I'll think twice uh, before I take another class that's that involved where I know there's going to be a lot of people in it because it's it can be a bit confusing and a bit um, unnerving in something like that. But I think we'll all adapt. Like I said, the people in the class are a really neat group of people. They're a lot of fun. And... Uh, Everybody gets along with everybody else and is cooperative, you know, and helpful. So, you know, I guess that, that compensates for the squishiness of the whole thing. Okay, so yesterday, Sunday, and this is why we did not do Stephen and Walter live this week on Sunday. We did it on Saturday instead, is because we went down to a place east of us, about an hour and a half east of us. It's basically where I was born. I didn't really grow up grow up there but all my relatives live down there and I don't have that many relatives to visit my cousin Scott now I have not seen my Scott boom rented lips here coffee okay I have not seen my cousin Scott since 2005 why is that you may ask well really um not for any particular reason um his father was my father's brother, so my uncle. Um, he passed away in 2005. He passed away relatively young. He was only about 59 years old, but to, to be very frank about it, he had, a, he had a lot of issues and he was an alcoholic. Um, but anyways, we had lost contact with Scott. He's 21 years younger than me, so you know, I was out and about before he was even walking, kind of a thing. So anyways, as you know, I had those aprons from the Masonic Temple that belonged to my father and my grandfather, and I had gotten a hold of Scott and because he was a member of the lodge and asked if he would like them, and he said he did. He would. So we went down. Well, we had a really nice visit with him. I mean, Scott's 40 now, and he's got a little girl. Now, I knew nothing about his uh, marital status or anything like that. Uh, in his emails, he kind of hinted that there was somebody else there, with him because he said we but he has a little girl she's four years old Michaela cutest little thing and funny um, when we first got there of course like all kids were strangers so she was on a little bit on the shy side but she got over that very quickly and such a smart little girl um, and so um, so polite too but she was a four-year-old, so she was a little rambunctious, but, you know, four-year-olds are four-year-olds. So there you go. Anyways, Scott had a nice lunch set out for us and everything, and we sort of caught up. It was difficult to have a conversation because there were some difficulties with that side of my family for Scott um, when he was younger and things like that. And, you know, you don't want to open up old wounds or anything like that. These things had nothing, though, to do with me. And my sister went down with us as well, and her husband, Walter, of course. And um, really, it's more, what, there's an expression, uh, you shouldn't visit the sins of the parent upon the child, something like that. Um, the issues that were, were from the other generation, not from our generation. So anyways, Scott's doing really well. He's got a really good job. He's got a good education and he's a really good father. Um, the mother is semi on the scene, but I gather they're not together. Um, for whatever reason, I didn't ask and the information wasn't volunteered and maybe another time, maybe if 
Scott and I carry on more of a conversation. As time goes by, maybe I'll hear the more of the particulars, but you know, it's not really any of my business. So, but all I can say is, um, his little girl is lovely and he's a really good dad. You could see that and that, you know, that, I thought that was really nice because I don't know my cousin that well. Um, but we did, we caught up on a few things, family history and stuff like that. And as I said, we've now opened up a line of communication. Um, I'm on his Facebook, he's on my Facebook, and we have emails and everything. And we are, we talked last night when I got home again about possibility of him coming out here for a visit. Bring Michaela too and, and everything. So that would be really nice. So yeah, it was a nice day. Um, but then something happened. I'll come to that in just a minute. I just want to mention what's coming up this week. On Friday night, we're off to the art gallery. This time we're not as volunteers, we're, we are there as participants. We bought tickets for the city's tree lighting, lighting ceremony. The art gallery is located right in behind the city hall. And every year city hall lights up a huge natural Christmas tree and from the what used to be a restaurant they don't use it for that anymore in the art gallery but it has panoramic windows and it looks right out over where they're going to do it so they're going to have like a cash bar and there's food and i think there's a christmas market as well and we're going to have ringside seats uh to watch the whole ceremony of them lighting in the tree and the whole bit so looking kind of forward to that i think it's a very civilized evening we can have a glass of wine you know some food and watch all this and sort of get into the christmas mood which takes a lot to get me in the christmas mood because as you know i don't like christmas so anyways i know i sound like a grinch but anyways that's coming up on friday okay and just before i get on to the last thing no i'm there okay so I alluded at the beginning of this that I didn't have what am I pissed off this week with. Um, but I have some concerns, okay? And I'm just going to state them right now because I've been sort of bottling them up inside myself and that's never good, is it? Um, and it all has to do with my mother. And you've heard the stories of my mother, okay? So I don't need to go into that. This week on, or this past week, we got her a Wednesday we put her into I don't like that term put her in I did not put her in she she finally got a placement in a nursing home so we had to take her we got her all settled in I talked a little bit about this yesterday on Stephen and Walter live so I'm not going to reiterate a lot of that stuff but the logistics of it all she's there now and um, we're trying to make it as comfortable and homey for her as we possibly can. Um, there will be an adjustment period. Of course, there will be an adjustment period. But not just for my mother, for me too. And for Walter, my sister, and my brother-in-law. You know, um, all of us that are closest to her. And so last night, I'd, all, I'd arranged for a TV set and a phone. And that all came on Friday. And that all got set up and everything. And we were going over there later today and I was going to take some of her pictures so we could start decorating her walls and things like that. Get it, you know, it is her home. So I called her. Um, I saw her on Friday and we we're busy Saturday. I called her on Sunday to let her know that we'd gone off and visited Scott and the whole bit. I said, so how's everything? Well, I'm quarantined. I said, you're quarantined? She went in healthy. Um, she says, well, yeah, she says, I threw up. Why did you throw up? Well, I don't know, but I just suddenly felt really sick to my stomach and yeah, I kind of made a mess. Um, I think it was kind of contained, she says, I'm like, Ooh, no, um, you know, I'm one of those kind of pe people. If someone's throwing up, I'll want to throw up kind of a thing. Um, and I said, so what? They've quarantined you. Well, I said, well, that means that we can't come in to see you. At least I said, we're going to come over like today, Monday um, and everything. And but I said, they won't let us in. She says, well, there's other people here walking around. I said, mom, that's the help. Um, I've got a phone over there uh, today and just check out and see how serious this is. I don't think it's very serious. 
I think what it might be is on Friday, my mother had a flu shot and I think she's having a reaction to the flu shot. Um, she gets a flu shot every year. I get a flu shot every year, as you know, because I've talked about this before. Um, I've never had a reaction. She's never had a reaction, but some people can. And every year they change what goes into the flu shot because there's new strains of flu all the time. So she may have had a reaction to that. So they have her on broth and they're, of course, watching her and monitoring the situation. I don't think it's serious, but this is the part that is my combination, what I'm pissed off about and what I'm upset about. I've told you before I'm tired, okay? I'm tired of my life being constantly ruled by my mother. Um, I'm tired of constantly worrying about her. I wake up at four o'clock in the morning and I have been for the last two weeks and the first things that go through my brain are about my mother and I can't get back to sleep. So I lay there for an hour with this voice in my head going off and I can't shut it up. So I get up and try to do other things. I plan my week around when I'm going over to see my mother. We haven't been on a holiday since February. Okay, I know. There are people out there going, oh, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. You know, play me the little violin on this. Some people never get holidays in the whole bit. Well, I'm sorry for those people, but I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about me. And I'm also talking about Walter as well, because all of this affects Walter as well. And he's been great through all of this, you know. he takes me over to see my mother. I mean, I can drive myself. I call it driving Miss Daisy. But I don't know. I, I, I feel more comfortable if Walt, Walter's there with me. Um, you know, and he doesn't complain about it. Um, but, you know, he has a life too. But anyways, um, so where was I with all this? So it's just like my whole life is, you know, dictated by my mother. She said something yesterday. I don't think she meant meant it, but I'm never really sure. She mentioned the fact that there was another lady in her room. She shares this room. She's in a basic level. There's three of them in there. One lady has dementia and that's caused my mother some grief uh, in that as well. And well, that's a story for another time. And there's another lady in there that my mother never sees because, and I haven't laid eyes on her yet either, because when I'm over there to see my mother, this lady's never in the room, her bed's all made up. And I said to mom, have you seen her yet? And she says, oh yeah, I have. Um, but I guess this other lady's son was there and I think he takes her out on weekends, you know, maybe to his house or something. So obviously she has mobility. I can't do that with my mother. She doesn't have the mobility, as you know, and that involves a lot of things, not just physically getting her somewhere, but bathroom, okay? She needs assistance uh, with that. And so I can't do it. But she made this comment. And I, I want to think she didn't do this on purpose, but my mother can be somewhat sly and man manipulative. And she's subtle about it. And she says, he's such a good son because he takes his mother out and he's there all the time. Okay. I'm there all the time. When I'm not there, I'm on the phone with her. I look after her. I do what I can do. I'm hurt. I am. Whether it's justified or not, it doesn't matter. I'm hurt. I've been hurt a lot by my mother. Not just in the last little while, my whole life. I never could do anything right. Anytime I was proud of something, she'd knock the air out of my sails by simply saying I could have done better or implied that I could have done better. Maybe I'm super sensitive. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't read anything into this. 
I don't know. The fact is though, it's the way it makes me feel. Now, does this mean that I'm going to just walk away from all of this? I wish I could. And that makes me feel really bad. And that's what I'm pissed off about because I feel bad about what I'm going to try to do next. And what I'm going to try to do is cut back the number of times I go over and see my mother. I've been going to the hospital three times a week. I cannot keep up that pace anymore. I know she's being looked after, she's cared for, there's activities, she seems to be getting somewhat involved in the few days she's been there, that's great. But I can't do it. I just can't do it anymore. So I'm going to weed her off me as best I can. And what I mean by that is I'm going to limit my visitations to maybe once a week, maybe more than that, depending on circumstances, but once a week. I will still continue to call her on the phone. I will still look after whatever comes up that needs to be looked after and that kind of thing. Does this make me a bad person? Maybe. I don't know. But I'm tired. I'm just tired. That's all I can say about that. I'm tired. I'm, I'm emotionally and physically tired. And I need a break. Just as simple as that. Um, my sister has a little different attitude um, about things. Um, to be honest, my sister's done her part. I don't know what more she could do. My brother's not in the picture. As we, as you know, um, I have power of attorney. So basically everything falls on my shoulders and my shoulders are broad, but not that broad anymore. So anyways, um, I'm sorry that I'm sharing these feelings with you, but I needed to say it. it. I say it in my head. I say it to Walter, but I just feel I need to verbalize it now. Because I know many of you out there have gone through this kind of thing before. I don't know if there's any kind of anything you can say or any advice you can give me that helps, but maybe there is. So if you've got a suggestion, I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not looking for pity. Okay. There are people out there that have it a lot worse than I do. And I know that. In fact, sometimes I think about that and that gives me a little bit of solace. But if you've got a suggestion, if you've been through this and, you know, you can, you know, you've got something you think might help me, I'm all ears with it. But right now I feel bad about how bad I feel bad about it. Simple as that. So in a sense, today is kind of a godsend and I'm not going to waste the day. It's a godsend because she's quarantined. I can't go over and visit her. I've got a few phone calls to make that are about her situation. Um, but then after that, I'm going to try and get caught up on my sewing. Um, I have pieces for the bag to cut out. I want to do another one of those uh, pot holders I showed, sh showed you. I want to get on with sewing my squares for my quilt. I just want to immerse myself today in my sewing and not think about my mother. Simple as that. Sort of a little mental vacation, I guess, doing something I love to do. Okay, enough about me. Okay, sorry. But I do consider, you know, this that I have with you, even though I've never met most of you or any of you except for, you know, maybe one uh, in person. Um, I just appreciate the fact that you're allowing me to use you as a sounding board. Okay, that's enough of that let's get on with the day let's have a good one i hope you have a good week and a great weekend and we'll see you on sunday for walt stephen and walter live at 4 p.m eastern standard time and next week's vlog and maybe i might be able to get up another idiot quilter sometime this week okay have a good one bye bye